All right, what's going on all my gamers, all my Genshin gamers. So, I said that I was going to do this video um, and play through the Arlecchino quest. I actually got her not too long ago, which, thank God, I won the 50-50 because that would have sucked if I didn't. And now I just got to get the request. I don't actually have her build either. I need some more artifacts for her, but, like, so far, so-so. So far, it's kind of working. I gave her Xiao's weapon because I don't have her weapon yet, and I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I just don't have any more, uh, what do you call them? I don't have any more, uh, battle pass weapons, so I'm kind of screwed there. Uh, but, I did say I was going to give this story a fair chance, so I'm going to do that. I will either give my opinions at the end of this video or in a separate video and then talk up more about, you know, other stuff to say to the game. I'll do all that stuff in a different video. But for now, I have to go to Poisson. Somewhere here. It like went away. I don't really know where I'm supposed to go. Please don't die from this fall. Whoop. That killed her. Hey traveler, Paimon. Slunny. Oh, Paimon knows that voice. <laughs> so do I. It's that person. Over here. Uh, uh, him, I guess. Whatever the fuck that is. I did not I like didn't pay attention to anything Lenny did in this game. To borrow one of the more popular turns of phrase at the moment, this appears to be quite the fated reunion. Running into you two out of the blue like this has really made my day. I certainly wasn't expecting it. You can say that again. What brings you to Passion? To Passione. Wait, Paimon's got it. You must be here for one of your magic shows, right? That would make sense if he's here for a magic show. Actually, we've run into a bit of trouble on the home front. Oh, no. So father arranged for us to stay in Poisson for the time being. Poisson. Oh, I like that too. I love the French accent just right out of nowhere. Poisson. Yep. Poisson. Most of the other members of the house. Like the croissant thing. Poisson. I've noticed Poisson. Poisson. A bit more Poisson. Crowded than usual. So yeah, there's actual people here. That's kind of weird. That seems kind of fucked up. They're taking over a place that just got no. most of the people Since killed. The of you are so curious, Mother. Perhaps I can fill in the gaps. Fill in my gaps. What? <laughs> Hold on. What? Wait a minute, brother. Father, you're here. Uh, that's mommy, actually. Um, you know. <laughs> is that just me who calls her that? I, I guess it is just me. I kind of want to know. House of the heart stuff, right? Nah, I don't really want to know. I don't really care. No need to be nervous. I God, you're so pretty. Your from your conversation just now. Really? Of course. <laughs> I never would have guessed. I also understand your confusion. Sending so many Fatui here to Poisson, it's only natural that some might suspect an ulterior motive to be... You could send more. I'll probably kill him by the end of the night. I understand. I'm well aware you've had your fair share of confrontations with the Fatui in the past. I'm going to kill them all. Exactly guarantee that we'll remain on good terms in the future. We won't. We are not on good terms now. I would say we have little reason to be at odds, wouldn't you agree? Nope, the house I do not. Hearth could stand to be more open with those who have worked. I'm gonna throw you over that uh thing over there. What is that? There's a little waterfall over there. I'm gonna throw you over it. To be frank, it all stems from a certain rumor circulating around the house of the hearth. It's an internal matter. I don't really care. What sort of rumor? A rumor that a certain phantom child is hiding away in the house of the hearth. So is it a ghost story? A phantom child? Who just phantom menace. Is giving Paimon on the creeps? A spirit that should have long ceased to exist is lurking in the shadows of the house of the hearth. So I decided to bring the children. So is it a ghost, ghost story? Continuing to investigate the situation. I expect I should be able to track down the spirit fairly quickly. After that, it's just a matter of resolving the situation, if you will. It shouldn't mm. be much trouble at all. If you're curious, or if you still have some concerns, it might uh. be advisable to stick around for a few days. I'm sure the children would be exceedingly pleased to welcome some visitors. Lenny, I'll leave you to entertain our guests. I have some matters to attend to. Of course, Father. She's so tall. I'm all about it. <gasps> hmm. 
Yeah, don't have anyone speak in this game, please. But why? It has long been a dream of mine to invite you to our home and introduce you to my other siblings. They have more siblings. Quite well known in the organization oh, right, he does. A lot of people have been talking about you, especially after everything with the prophecy. If you're willing, why don't you stay a while and have a little chat with us? Mm. All right. We don't have anything else to do right now anyway. But let's be clear. We're just going to be there as guests, okay? Don't get any funny. Oh, wait a second. We're your guests. That probably means we'll be treated to lots of yummy food, right? You're going to spit in our food. During our stay in Poisson, we've been helping out the Poisson. locals with some fishing. We bring in quite the bounty every day. In fact, today is the perfect chance for me to show you what I can do in the kitchen. Let's go. In the kitchen is to do like a stir fry. <clears throat> when the hearth flame goes out. Nice. Uh, be a house guest. Is it here in the Poisson? Yeah, it is. Where the hell am I going? <laughs> That's a funny voice. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Holy shit. Get the hell out of my way! Oh, okay. Oh, jeez. Uh, am I up or down? Down. Whee! I really thought I was gonna fall there. House from one of the locals to use as a temporary base. I'll come back later and tidy up a bit. After that, it should be all ready for you to stay in tonight. Sweet. Awesome. Thanks. So, where are we off to now? Well, when I happened to run into you two earlier, I was actually in the middle of distributing some supplies. With this cool. many people staying in Poisson, we have to bring in outside supplies every now and then. I should probably make sure the rest of these provisions get delivered. Otherwise, people might start to get antsy. Okay, we'll come with. There are all sorts of rumors about your organization floating around out there. Paimon's not sure if she could even take a wild guess as to what's true and what's not. Like now that we finally have the chance At this point I don't even know what the house, house of the heart does. So it's like taking kids and well, raise them as weapons. No, that's probably not right. Just follow me. <laughs> Raising sleeper agents. I'm assuming they're just like regular kids. There's nothing really special about them. Or at least most of them, but she probably has like kids that she does train. Something like that. I don't know. Hello? Winnie, we're finally here. The supplies. I'm assuming you've brought them with me? Yep, here you go. Uh, hello? Something caught your eye? Hey, I'm up here. It's the Traveler in Paimon. I'm, yeah. No way! I, I haven't done anything. Oh, wait, this is post. Uh, 2.1? Quest? 2.2? So I guess I have done something. I saved Fontaine. One at a time, please. Don't crowd around them all at once. We don't Guys, please, I have time for pictures with everybody. Oh, it's all right. Gotta say, Byron didn't realize we were this famous. We did kind of save their entire country, so I would understand. Oh, great. Because of them. Father told us about how you helped Linny. According to her, you're a trustworthy friend. And as far as she's concerned, that's pretty much the highest compliment we've ever heard her give. As you can imagine, everyone's been very curious about you. Uh oh. I heard the traveler is so strong that she can move a mountain with her bare hands. I have Zhongli who could do that. That she can clean out the entire pantry and hotel Sephora in just three days. All right, well, that one's probably true. Hers isn't hers isn't a stretch. Mine's to oh, kinda. When guests visit, you're supposed to give them gifts and stuff, right? Oh, I guess. You don't need something like that. Besides, Cough up your wallets, everybody. You. Give me your money. Come on, go and search. I can give you some of my new potions. Just pick your poison. Why is that? <laughs> Why is she making potions? Huh? Huh? Why does she know to make what? Why does she know how to make poison? Not a bad idea. 
I know you usually prefer to fight head on, but uh, it never hurts he to does know me. bag of tricks, right? When it comes to eliminating your enemies, staying quiet can go a long way. Trust me, I would know. I was poisoned not too long ago, and I'm still Wait, what did he say? After effects. So I'm not quite as good as I was before, but <laughs> some pointers. I'm having some memory loss. I'm having some memory loss. Why does that child know how to do stuff? Make poison? So many questions. Ooh, how about this? Tell me the name of someone who really annoys you, and we'll teach him a lesson for you. You guys, the Fatui. The Fatui gives me a lot of pain in the ass. All right, get rid of all of them. I think that's enough suggestions for now. When it comes to Lenny's kind of annoying too. Nah, he's fine. He's fine. You Salt of the earth. physical gift to make our guests happy. In fact, pestering them with suggestion after suggestion might make them more annoyed than anything. I would say your enthusiasm has certainly gotten across. Eh, it's not the most annoying thing. Really? <laughs> Definitely feel the love. Yeah, that's one way to put it. I really thought he was gonna say this. It's been a long time since we felt love. That'd have been oh, fucked up, bro. For that. <clears throat> well, we'll talk to you all later. We've still got supplies to distribute. All right, see you wow, later. it sure has been a long time since I've felt <laughs> a loving embrace of another person. Oh, God, that's fucked up. <laughs> Bye. Father only feeds us. He doesn't care. <laughs> Scared you, did it? That kind of talk comes with being part of the House of the Hearth. That doesn't when seem Bolts appropriate. Really young, he strangled all of his family pets. Just out of curiosity, he was labeled a dangerous problem child and was abandoned by his family. I wonder why, bro. Now, the the kid's a fucking psychopath. Potions. Father has forbidden her from trying all the different concoctions she comes up with, but she still tries to test them in secret. Really have to keep an eye on that one. She's fucking poisoning people. What? Well, I'm mainly responsible for collecting. Why is he see why is he like fifteen feet taller than you then? He's very passionate about his work and has no reservations. Wait, why does he look like an adult and then Lenny doesn't if they're the same age? I know you two probably aren't used to that kind of talk. I don't know. But I can promise you they only had the best of intentions. Things like stealth tactics and developing different poisons, they really mean a lot to them. They were just trying to share the best of what they could offer. That's all. Have you ever wanted to kill your enemies in your sleep? I could teach you. Oh, thank you, fucking four-year-old child. <laughs> That's really funny, though. I keep, I keep like, making a joke about it, but <laughs> I think it's really fucking funny. It probably makes sense. That's why they're, like, in the house of the hearth. And also, they were abandoned by their family. Rightfully so, by the way. I don't want to make it seem like they shouldn't have been abandoned by their family. That kid strangled pets, by the way. Outsiders? Ah, allow me to introduce you. This is the Traveler and Paimon. Oh, you're the famous duo I've been hearing so much about. Yeah. It's nice to meet you. Me and my pet monkey, Paimon. To all sorts of places. Is that true? Unfortunately. We're making our way all across to that. Yeah, we landed in France. You. you must be pretty familiar with Fontaine by now, then. Have you seen the new opera that started running recently? Uh, I think it's called uh, The Four Thousand Thieves. Is it by uh, oh, this is the first Marina? Of it. it seems like it's going to be fantastic. Uh, from what I've been able to tell from the posters, anyway. Uh, you should definitely check it out if you have the time. Oh, and there's the blind maiden too. That one is supposed to have. That one sounds like it's by Farina. Farina has to be involved in some of these, right? It just seems like she would be. After this mission is over, I think I'll go get a manicure. Go get a mani pedi. Can you mean? I can't fault you for that one. Wonder how much it'll cost. I can't imagine it's that much. Well, I guess if you doubt yourself, it's less. Looks like the house of the heart. Just like get go slick black, you know. <laughs> I heard that. No, you didn't. Uh, <laughs> oops. <laughs> I'm guessing you're referring to Foltz and the others. <laughs> yeah. I heard you. No, you didn't. Not all like them. 
I bet those crazies are practically foaming at the mouth right now. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they just can't wait to get back to Snezhnaya to carry out the plan. What's the plan? That's enough, Filial. No, 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 no. Hey, whoosh. Don't talk about family members behind their back, right? <sighs> Whatever. Let's go. What does she mean by the plan? Um, guess this is goodbye what? then. If you mm. ever have some time, we should go see the opera together. Hmm. Something about the plan. Well, that's it for the supplies. <clears throat> we should probably head back as well. Well, I guess there we go. Well, they didn't seem too happy with each other. Seems like there could be something more going on here. Hey, you're right. We're only here as guests after all. Oh, uh, Linny's getting super far ahead. Come on, let's catch up. Wait, run. There's infighting in the house of the hearth. Wow. Oh, fuck. Meow. <laughs> I gotta do that every time because I don't want to die. I've, di I've died in so many like cutscenes like that. It's really funny. Uh, there's something. Yeah. <laughs> well, father is always encouraging us to be strong-willed and independent. They're definitely weird. So if there's one thing we've got, it's people who aren't afraid to speak their mind. It definitely well, should, should be. Probably get cooking. Want to join? Of course. Food. Then let's head out. Uh huh. Fremine, what are you doing here? Just uh, staring off into. Well, she's got the thousand year stare. What the fuck? Fremine, nice to see you again. Just like staring off into this fucking void. I heard you here as guests of House of the Hearth. Welcome. We were just going to make some food. I gotta hear a Japanese voice. So does he sound like that in Japanese? I don't actually know. And I seem to remember you mentioning you wanted to make seafood soup for the traveler in Paimon. Ooh. Seafood soup? We're gonna get a crab ball. Were you looking for something? I'm gonna learn you today. Maybe I can help. Get some crawfish. Nothing. I just wanted to see if there were any extra supplies. Yeah, we've got some left over. What do you need? Some food and water, and some clean cloth, if possible. Is he going on an adventure? No problem. Give me a second here. Food, water... Wait a minute. What do you need all of those for? Wait a minute. You're not on any missions as far as I'm aware, and you were just going to come meet with us. So what's Wait this all just about? a bloody second. I... I thought I'd grab an extra portion because I get hungry at night. Could be because I'm growing, you know? He's lying through his and, teeth. Uh, Fremine. You got a cat. Remember what I told you? You're not like me. Your lying skills still need some work. <clears throat> Tell me what's going on. Is it really bad enough that you have to keep it from your own brother? He's got a cat. Be better if we gave them some space. Uh, Wait, am I right? Does he have a pet or something? My guess is that he has a pet. Huh. This is the first time I've seen that kind of look on your face. Whatever happened, does it have something to do with father? <sighs> yes. Just uh, follow me. Hmm. Is it back here? You're back. Oh, and you brought some friends with you this time. Hello, my name's Linny. I grew up in the house of the hearth. And you are? Hi, Linny. I'm also a child of the House of the Hearth, just like you. You can call me Claire V. Claire V? It's nice to meet you. Okay, my guess was a pet. It's not a pet. Does that name ring any bells, Lenny? No, not at all. That's not a name we have on our roster. I'm sure of it. What I'm not sure of, though, is how she's a ghost. Oh shit! 
She must be the oh. phantom child father's been searching for. Oh. Like the kid that they couldn't find. I'm guessing you were the one that found her, Fremini. You, uh, haven't told father, have you? No, I haven't told anyone. I've just been keeping her hidden. You can't exactly hide a child. <laughs> How long? About half a month now. Okay, I guess you can hide a child. We got to Poisson, then. Do you have any idea what I was gonna say, you can't exactly hide a child. It's like a full grown. Really? Or not a full grown, but you know. Standing, it looks like a whole human being. Father has been trying to find. If father finds out about this, everyone involved is going to be punished. Me first. You know the rules of the house, Fremenet. I know you do. Father doesn't tolerate any form of betrayal. So why are you doing this? I've thought it through. And I just can't hand her over like that. What's the worst that can happen? Don't you remember last year? Sheplow nearly died after getting poisoned during that one mission. Okay, that's what happens. Never mind. He wasn't able to get back before the poison started taking effect. And not a single person was there to help him. That night, while I was sleeping, I heard a voice telling me to go save him. I opened my eyes, but I couldn't find the source of the voice. I thought maybe I was just hearing things, but I went to look for him anyway. Luckily, I got there with enough time to save his life. <laughs> Shout to Fremenet. That feeling of being haunted, of hearing voices. <laughs> Look at that child, bro. Many times in the house Just having a good time. I'm sure you've noticed. So what you're saying is, that was her? She was the one who spoke to you that night? Unless there are other spirits roaming around the house of the hearth, I don't think there's any other possibility. I gotta say this. Are they all just okay with this girl being a spirit? Like, they're just all... Like, this doesn't bother them. They're just... Yeah, that's a spirit. That's okay. <laughs> you would think if they would see a ghost, they would be a little bit more scared, but they're just like, uh... <laughs> He's a ghost, dude. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> they're a lot braver than me. I'd probably be freaking out. Whether she was a spirit or an actual child, I would have acted without a second thought. Because that's what father ordered us to do. But she's been living with us, helping us from the shadows all this time. I think that makes her. Well, I guess when you're trained like that, they don't really care because it's like, well, I'll just dispatch him anyways. Not when there's so much we still don't know. So what's your plan then? You can't keep her here forever. Someone is bound to find out eventually. Eventually? I haven't thought that far yet. I don't want to disobey an order from father, but I also don't want to put Clairvy in danger. Come with me. There are a couple things I'd like to say to you in private. <laughs> it's gonna beat the dog shit out of him. We're just gonna turn back and you're just gonna see Lenny just boom, 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 just beating his ass. <laughs> and another one of these motherfuckers, uh, and just beating him. It sure seemed like they were about to bite each other's heads off. No way. They have a really deep bond. I could tell right away because I also have a friend like that. I just <laughs> Doesn't clarify. don't know how long that kind of bond can last. Oh, uh oh. The darkness in the house runs deeper than you can imagine. No one can get out alive. I'm sorry, Lynn. Is she supposed to say. Weird shit like I, I don't know. Anyone else into this. I mean, she has a oh, really? ghost, I guess. You didn't mean to? Because I, for one, wish you did. Huh? Well, I guess because he what wants to help. Mean? You know, when we were younger, you didn't call me Linny. You called me brother, just like Lynette. We grew up together, the three of us. We were all orphans, all rescued by father. Of all the siblings in the house of the hearth, I think our bond was the closest. Later on, when you started calling me Linny, I wasn't actually surprised. After all, Lynette and I are related by blood. We've had to depend on each other to survive long before we joined the house. Linny, I... The darkest and most difficult moments of my life happened before you and I had ever met. I'm sure that's true for you as well. Even so, Fremenet, we've stood by each other for all these years now, and to me... That 
means more than blood. This music doesn't fit. I'm gonna be completely honest. Are the most important people in my life. No one can replace you. So I won't let you face anything alone. Not if I can help it. Oh. Sorry, now that I mention it, it's actually starting to bother me. <laughs> Is, they should like have like story specific music. Because this music is way too happy for the moment that just happened. Like, uh, they should change it to something like sad. Or did that kid just disappear in front of my eyes? What the hell? Oh no, she's back. This kid gives me the creeps. I mean, she's a ghost. I'm not gonna be like, why am I rationalizing? Why am I rationalizing a ghost? My coping mechanism, I guess. I don't know. Anyways. He's just disappearing, uh, appearing or disappearing from reality. Hope we aren't interrupting anything. Like a fight, or... Yeah, are you stomping his head in? You're not crying, are you? Is everything all right? Pussy. No. <laughs> That's wrong. I'm so sorry. Thanks for asking. Well, You're having a heart-to-heart. -heart. I should interrupt that. That's so, That's so wrong of me. I'm so sorry, chat. If there's anything we can do to help, just say the word. It's just a small family dispute. It's not something our guests should trouble themselves with. In fact, it might be better if your stay ended here. We just got here, bro. We didn't even whatever. When guests are around, families are often on their best behavior, and any disputes are less likely to escalate. That's what you're trying to say, isn't it? I just. Thank you. Uh huh. I was really hoping to keep you out of it. But even if I could think of some other reason to turn you away, I'm not sure I could convince you. I know things could turn dangerous, so I promise you this. From now on, I'll protect you like my life depends on it. I'm. Me too. Well, I, I, I don't, I, 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 I'm head. good. If we don't plan on I'm probably better without father, you guys. Now it doesn't matter. Our only other option is to solve the mystery of her identity before father is able to track her down. Mm. That means finding out where she came from and what she's doing here. Then we can send her on her merry way and pretend like none of this ever happened. Did you, did, have you ever tried just asking her? Or? And? Uh. -huh. And nothing. I tried taking her somewhere really far away, but after some time, she just reappeared. She even came with us all the way to Poisson. It seems like wherever the house is, she follows. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Don't know much about spirits? Do you two have any ideas? About spirits? No, I can't say that we do. Well, actually, we have met some in Inazuma. What do we do now? last wish before they died they'll let go of whatever is keeping them here and return to the ley lines oh it's just that oh and then we had that one time with Hu Town. actually we have a lot of experience with, with so spirits on the thing about it guaranteed to work or anything is there a phone here can we call Hu Tao? worth a shot guess that means we should go ask her about her wish but first Fremene, i need you to promise me something what is it i need you to promise me that this will stay between the two of us we're the masterminds behind this whole thing. No one else gets involved. Can you do that for me? Of course. I promise. All right. Then let's seal the promise just like when we were kids. Fist bump on three. <laughs> fist bump. Let's go. Ready? Give him a bro fist. One, two, three. Nice. I, I swear. swear. Huh? Where the hell did she come from? Wait, what the fuck? What the hell? Oh, she's gonna keep her fist out. What the? Hell? <laughs> that's pretty funny. What a surprise! I like that. <laughs> that's, that's a good moment, bro. She looks so annoyed. And uh, when exactly did you get here? Hi, Lynette. Oh fuck, she's pissed. You're an idiot, brother. 
Well. And you too, Fremine. Oh fuck. Uh... You three traveler, and you four Paimon. I I don't even go here. What, what did I do? I've seen Claire be around the House of the Hearth before. I hadn't seen her in Poisson, so I what? figured what? she must not have come with us. But it turns out you were just hiding her. I heard you talking about your. I didn't even do nothing, man. Rather than steering clear of the situation, I'd rather fully join in. Jaina, like I did something, bro. I didn't even do nothing. If you don't agree, I'll have no choice but to report everything back to father. Simple as that. All right. Well, she's. She's <sighs> not giving us much wiggle room here, Lynette. Yeah, I don't think she plans to. I guess we're all in this together then. We're all After in we this talk to Claire together. Again, we'll figure out our next move. There's no time to lose. Let's go. Oh, is it tomorrow? <laughs> I didn't even realize that. It's tomorrow, chat. bringing you this food you guys um she said she's full but the food doesn't look like it's even been touched also she's saying she's full how is she full she didn't even i, I don't know that's right this is a really funny Based quest on what i've been able to observe it doesn't seem like claire v can interact with the physical world at all mm. still when she's presented with food she'll always linger around it for a good little while Maybe <laughs> she just stares into it. <laughs> she really is eating those things. Does she know that she has already passed away? I've tried to ask her, but she didn't answer. My guess is that she's just as confused as we are. Or how do you even ask someone that question? Are you uh understand the question at all? You know, Clarby, if you've got some time, when you have been, uh, I'd like to ask you a few questions. If uh. <laughs> Friend. Hi, I'm Claire V. Hello. <laughs> when that's having a good How did you join the house of Lynette is always so calm, it's funny. Huh? Isn't it the same for everybody? The knave brings you here and then you can't leave. <laughs> Shit. I mean, it's not on the roster. I guess you're not wrong. And I've never seen you before. The roster? Oh. I get it now. I think there might be some things you don't know about this place. The people in charge. Said. They're not as nice as they look. They say they keep a roster, but it's not complete. There are a lot of people who aren't on it. And never will be. Alright, this took a dark turn. House, some people are family and other people are just test subjects. Okay, this got really dark. <laughs> people aren't ever going to get a place on the roster. Unless it's the roster of people who've been executed. Wait, does, does that mean the knave... She... I knew Is it. Is there anyone that can vouch for you? Mm. I knew I should never trust her. Don't never trust a... Perry. Never trust a big friend. ass and a smile. Well, she she's doesn't smile, but still. She's got a big ass, that's for sure. Have either of you heard of that name before? No. Never trust a never trust a big button to smile. That girl is poison. Clarity. Perry. Perry. Neither of those names are on the roster, but it seems like she's telling the truth. Either that, or this kid's already got a bag of tricks bigger than mine. Hmm. Maybe we I like her design, though. I like her hair. Clarvy, do you have a wish? Uh, I wish, wish to die. Oh. It can be anything you want. Just imagine. It's your birthday, you're blowing out the candles, and your wish is... Is... Boom. Say it. <laughs> to... To go outside, where the sun can find me. She not walk outside, cause. It? Well, that sounds easy enough. 
Darkness in the house runs deeper than you can imagine. No one can get out alive. Okay, time to Lumine really needs an inside voice because, like, <laughs> it's so obnoxious how it just deadpans. Basic illusory magic to take Clairvy outside and bring her somewhere with sunlight. Lynette, try and find the I think it's more of a metaphorical outside about and see if her name is on it. Fremenet, you stay in Poisson. We can't be the only ones who've had run ins with Clairvy. I need you to collect intel on everything she's said and done. And break. Understood. I'll try my best. What about us? What should we do? I really appreciate your willingness to help, but this is a family matter. I don't want to drag you in too deep. Family matters, good it's show. Too risky. Let me think. Since father considers you to be guests, maybe you could stick by her side for a little while <laughs> you don't need to do anything except keep up some nice casual ah, ha, ha. that's so crazy you guys stay here i'll go hang out with your mom anyways sounds like a plan i'll give you a magic bird if father suspects something all you need to do is release it when she's not looking and it'll alert me that something's wrong of course that's only as a last resort mm. if father doesn't seem to notice us there's no need to make contact We'll reconvene here tonight after all said and done. Seems good. If the worst case scenario happens and we're discovered, just tell father everything. We're not going to let our guests get punished for our own. <laughs> just actions. just fucking That's snitch. Fuck it. All right. Say less. You too. Okay. This is where we part. Father should be at the beach nearby. I'm going to go have a beach day with your mom. Really hope this goes well. Oh, Arlecchino. No, uh -huh. uh -huh. well. That's so crazy, yo. Uh, so we're alone. Prime on, get the fuck out of here. Anyways, uh -huh. what you doing, girl? All right. Uh, where's the 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 nave? The canave over there. Do -do. She just normally hang out by the beach. Is that's the thing she does. Yeah, I look who it is. Yeah, <sighs> fucking jackass. Here we go. It's the nave and child. Welcome back from the void, you stupid prick. Hey, aren't you supposed to be in Snezhnaya recuperating? What are you still doing in Fontaine? Oh, it's you two. I didn't expect to run Hey guys, it's me, child. Prick. I was unconscious for quite a while after the fight in the Primordial Sea. After I woke up, I realized I was being taken back to Snezhnaya, and well, I couldn't have that now, could I? Not when I've still got under No, you could. Don't come back. Fontaine. So, I mustered up all my strength and made the journey back on my own. Do you like swim what through the water? What sort of business are we talking here? It has to do with Skirk, my master. Skirk. I really wanted to meet up with her, but by the time I got back, she had already left. I still have so many questions for her. Without any other leads, all I could do was ask the knave to help me track her down. Wouldn't you, wouldn't, she, wouldn't Child be the only one who knows about her? Like, shouldn't oh, we be asking okay. him, specifically? So, have you found any clues? Unfortunately, no. While the House of the Hearth is adept at collecting all manner of intelligence, certain existences can still manage to escape our purview. Yeah, she like came out of the void, so... The Master feels there's a need to meet with me. She's not going to be found. Well, that's understandable. But that problem has an easy fix. I just need to become stronger, and then... <coughs> uh, yeah, you're bleeding there, champ, by the way. <laughs> the worst of it is over. Is it? Well, I mean, he was unconscious, so yeah, I guess so. It's all thanks to that one kid from the House of the Hearth. Elwar, I think her name was. 
She gave me a bunch of random potions. <laughs> they didn't go down easy, let me tell you. Pain and chills all over. But they really did I ate a bunch of random out. plants. And I got better. Because it looks oh, like I really okay. have to head back this time. The old man's been putting the pressure on me. He sent someone to tell me I'm needed for some sort of project. Project Stuja? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, I heard Regrader's involved too. I'm not looking forward to having to listen to all his monologuing, that's for sure. Hey, yeah, who hates monologuing? A way for me to stay in Fontaine for a little longer. Helping Linny and the others brush up on their fighting skills would be far more interesting. If you and I could spar, that would be even better. I've been waiting for a chance to see you go all out. Me too. And what a sweet little daydream that is. Oh, why did she say it like that? I'll be leaving Fontaine shortly as well. Can I get your number? Considering how little they see fit to step outside the homeland, being called on to return to Snezhnaya by such illustrious dignitaries. What a great honor. Wouldn't you agree? One I could do without, I'd say. Is it just Pyron, or does it kind of seem like they're talking so, shit? Yeah, probably. The House of the Hearth. To what do I owe the visit? Um, Boredom. Well, we just um, right. We're super close to Linny and the others, but we still don't know much about you. Yeah, what's your favorite food? So? You like introductions have already been made. You like walks on long walks on the beach? Oh, uh, Where's your favorite well, place to go? You, Can we go now? It's not like a date or anything, uh huh? At least tell us something a little extra, like why do you call yourself father? Huh? Good question. I'd also like to know. Yeah, I'd also like you to leave and not, you know, third wheel our date. But whatever. Intelligence work has been quite successful. Telling you the answer to that question would only serve to undermine that success, and we can't have that now, can we? Oh man. Spoken like a true diplomat. That was some expert sidestepping right there. Well, if there's nothing else, I think I'll take my leave. I still have a small matter to resolve at home. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's, <laughs> there's no need to go back. <laughs> you, you know, let's, like, look at this plant over here. Look at that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to hear the answer to this. I didn't even ask a question. Some of the members of your organization. I guess I picked the wrong one. Seemed like really good kids. They actually reminded me of Tonya and Tuser. Which, by the way, if you ever betray nice tits. Them, I'm just letting you know, I won't let you off easy. And why would I betray them? Well, you've already that's a good question. Where did that come from? Once, haven't you? At least, that's what I heard. Hmm. Isn't that the old House of the Hearth, not her actual current House of the Hearth? Okay, okay, I admit. That's just Paul, the if you will. Told me. The rooster, I mean. The cock. Please, bro, give, give Lumine some fucking voice lines. Never mind, what the fuck, man? Curious, this is actually obnoxious. Have to say. Care to enlighten me? Yes. Oh, well, nothing much. Just some stuff about you taking out many other members of the House of the Hearth, and even going so far to attack your own family. Hmm. I see. God, she's got hips, bro. Based on your reaction, I'm guessing it's all a bunch of lies. I doubt it. Hardly. I don't appreciate his particular turns of phrase, but I suppose he didn't say anything untrue. Although, it would be more accurate to say that there is a certain level of prejudice involved, but I don't intend to clear that up just yet. Prejudice has a funny way of concealing the real truth behind certain things. So he's a racist. <laughs> that I find to be quite advantageous. <laughs> Sorry, that's funny call to me. Call yourself a Fontanian, for example, and people will assume all sorts of things. When the real truth is that this is simply the land where I was raised. Huh? You're not actually from Fontaine? But then, why did you try to help out with the prophecy? Well, she was raised here. She's not I was born here. Trying to protect the children born in Fontaine, claiming that I myself was a Fontanian simply made it easier to operate. People would hardly suspect a fellow Fontanian of having any ulterior motives. 
Who wouldn't want to save their homeland after all? Yeah, the makes sense to me. The wouldn't have any effect on me, but it would have caused great harm to the House of the Hearth. Well, you wanted extra information, didn't you? There you go. I hope that satisfied your curiosity. Mm, kinda. So, you stayed in Fontaine for the kids. I guess I was like Mr. T to you'd for the kids, fool. Apologies. Looks like I was holding on to some prejudices myself. Why are you still here? Good. Like I said, I like it when others have misconceptions of me. Actually, while I was recuperating weird. at the House of the Hearth, there was something else that really caught my attention. I heard that members always resolve disputes and arguments with a friendly spar, and the loser has to back down. Seems pretty cool if you ask me. <laughs> He's like, I would, I would love to have grown up there. Hone their skills. Well, that's only a recent development. In the past, such spars weren't nearly so friendly. Mm. The losing party would lose everything, including their life. They were that high stakes? Whew, at least that's not a thing anymore. Well, the current atmosphere is not half bad. I'm a bit jealous, actually. You've got so many family members around you, and you even get to live with them. Having a lot of family around means dealing with a considerable amount of bickering and scheming. Once Tonya and Tusser enter their rebellious phase, I'm sure you'll understand. <laughs> Just imagine. Tusser becomes obsessed with plucking out strands from the rooster's mustache, or Tonya decides to dye her hair 42 different colors. Okay, okay. I get the picture. Well, I guess she is... She, well, I guess she does have a lot of experience with children, so <laughs> she does, uh, she knows about the kids in the rebellious well, phase. I can look at the time. I should probably get going. Makes a lot of sense. Traveler, Paimon, not sure where our paths will cross next. Nowhere, I hope. Run into each other. We should I hope you run into a wall. Time to spar. <laughs> um, again, maybe this is a conversation we can have when you look less like you're going to kill over it. I don't want to push him into the river, see how that works out for him. No thanks necessary. You also played a part in obtaining the Gnosis. I would say we can call ourselves even. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Well, I'm off. See you all some other time. Wait, he still doesn't have his vision. Eh, doesn't I don't care. Going to. Do you want to head back with this? Oh. You want me to leave so soon? Oh, I. Well, well you see, um. I just... I'm rather enjoying the evening breeze. If you don't mind, I think I'll stick around for a bit. I have some things to think about. You know, we can Apologies walk together. For attending to you like a proper host. Uh. Please forgive this slight. I do hope you'll have a pleasant stay. I'm just saying, we can. We managed to keep her distracted until nightfall. Good thing Child was there to keep the conversation going. You don't think she suspected anything, do you? Oh, no I doubt it. If Liddy ran into any issues. Or maybe I'll she did. Back and see how everything went. We are pretty, you know. We were pretty obvious, so I assume she noticed something. Whoop. And my frames are dying. story short, we ran into a small issue. Clarby can't go into the sunlight. Oh, that sucks. Everything was fine at first. She followed me up to the surface just like I told her. But as I let her out of the shadows and into the sunlight, she vanished. What the? I turned around and there she was. Standing at the edge of the shadows, silently watching me. Huh. Maybe she's afraid of sunlight, or... No, it wouldn't be her wish if that were 
the case. Hmm. Well, we could always try Gucci or into it. <laughs> Oh, true. I'm gonna say, can they physically touch her? Because you can kind of like drag her into the sun now. Eventually, the sun went down, so all I could do was bring her back here. <sighs> How did it go with you, Lynette? Good. I've got the list. It's right here. Really? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's take a look. Is it like the list of executed? Oh, that's a lot of pages. Oh, it's gonna take forever to get through it all. There are a lot of people who died. We can each take a section. Here. La Pouillade, Landois, Jean Bell, Horror. Horror. Oh, God. No, that's. Uh, I'm good. Oh, yikes. That Horror guy has a huge scar on his face. He's kind of giving Pipe on the creeps. Ah, I've met him before. The scar is from an injury he received during a mission. Oof. <laughs> I still remember him joking with me about it. He said any future lover would take one look at him and then lose all the rest. <laughs> That's Did fair. Did he say anything else? Well, I asked if there was someone he was interested in. He yeah, that's all there is to say. That's where our conversation ended. It was only later that I learned he really did have someone he liked. He risked everything to escape so he could be with her, but it didn't work. One day, father asked to see him, and, well, I never saw him again after that. Tragic. Wait, so that means the knave, she... It may seem cruel, but it's just one of the rules of the house. Betrayal is not to be taken lightly. We know too many secrets to come and go as we please. So, if you do try to leave, okay with your life. Oh, he tried to leave. I was like, wait, what did he do that would get Arlecchino that pissed? Her name's not here, huh? Hmm. Well, that's not too surprising. It doesn't seem like this list is complete. It only contains records dating back around five years. Let's shift our attention then. Fremenet, were you able to find anything out? Fremenet. <sighs> Fremine. Hello. Uh, uh, sorry, I was thinking about something. I managed to talk to quite a few people, but I couldn't help but notice that the atmosphere in the house was a little. This is a what? A little strange. weird. Strange. Strange. Yeah. I mean. Hmm. I know there have been arguments in the past, times when people haven't gotten along. Chaplo and Filial are a good example of that. Oh, those are two of the people that we met while delivering supplies. Paimon can see how they might not get along. They had very different vibes, and their um. Is that the word vibes? Interests seem to be pretty different as well. They're pretty pissed at That's each other. To be expected, actually. Father brought us all here, shared her knowledge with us, taught us how to fight. That's one thing we all share. But what the ability to that's fight? That's also where the similarities end. Not all of us feel the same desire to stay here. As members of the House of the Hearth, we're also considered part of the Fatui, and to Ew. a lot of people, that's an identity they never asked for. Certain members get older and realize they want something else for themselves. But considering the rules of the house, they can't have it, huh? People would never say that out loud. Yeah. People like Chaplo and Foltz are loyal to Father and her vision. They're proud to be part of the Fatui. Filial and Nantoy, on the other hand, well, they aren't quite as enthusiastic. These kinds of conflicts have always been there. It's not like Father is in the dark about any of this. She doesn't well, give a shit. That's true. But it just feels like things have gotten worse lately. Filial and the others... It seemed like they were meeting in secret to talk about something. Hmm. I can't say for sure, but I think they've met Claire V. <gasps> you think they all know you about think it? think she's been inciting them to act out? No. Um, not exactly. But I wouldn't be surprised if she said something to them about the darkness in the house. 
and how deep yeah because you don't know how many people actually know about that so they're probably like oh god four experiments being run on children <gasps> what the fuck? used as pawns on the battlefield without so much as the strength to survive and they just believed all that without any evidence i believe that without evidence i know the fatui what the hell <laughs> it sounds just like them the excuse they were looking for whether they actually believe them to be true is secondary. Should I believe it? This is all because of Project Stuja, isn't it? What is that? Oh, hold on a second. What's this Project Stuja all about, huh? This is the second time it's come up now. Sorry, but I'm not sure of the details either. I only know what Father has told us, which is that it's something the Rooster and Regrader have been working on together. Apparently, it has to do with the Fatui's strategic plan for the future. Those bastards. Because the House of the Hearth was so successful in obtaining the Gnosis, we now have the honor of playing a key role in Project Stuja. Is honor the word you want to use? Because it doesn't sound like it. Isn't that a good thing? Key role is just another way of saying dangerous role. To us, the whole thing is an inconvenience. Father thinks so too, but she's in no position to refuse. Their plan isn't exactly unreasonable, and they've been funneling the house a lot of funding. It's just that we'll lose a lot of members in the process. Damn. Participating in the plan, it's an honor in name only. What they're really trying to do is subdue us. The existence of an intelligence organization outside their control makes them feel uneasy. Mm-mm-mm. I'm just gonna ignore any of my dialogue just because it's really annoying. All of this have to do with the conflicts you were talking about earlier. Bimek doesn't get the connection. External pressure has a way of exacerbating internal strife. We can't overlook the power of fear either. People are afraid of dying, and that fear is often the impetus for a lot of stupid decisions. I thought resolving the Clairvy situation would make everything go back to normal. But it looks like things are more complicated than I thought. If we leave Filial and the others to their own devices, sooner or later, Father will be forced to take action. We can only focus on one situation at a time, brother. You're right. Even if we confront Filial and the others, it won't do any good. It might even make matters worse. Oh no. We should focus on Clairvy for now. Where is Clairvy? Well, Shouldn't she be around? It's getting late. We should head back and get some rest. We'll try again first thing tomorrow. Lynette, you stick with me this time. Fremenet, keep a close eye on Filial and the others. Make sure they don't do anything they'll regret. Good work today, everyone. Have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Well, goodbye, everybody. Poisson. Uh, I gotta go rest. I'm always looking forward to an early night, but she can't sleep at all. Uh, hey, you don't think the knave will be too angry with Lenny and everyone if she finds out? She'll be absolutely pissed. It might even resolve in a boss fight, you could say. If she were to actually get angry. You have to protect Paimon if that happens, okay, Traveler? <sighs> Trust you, Zephyr Traveler. <gasps> oh, look over there. Is that Clary? Quick, let's catch up with her before anyone sees. Probably a really inconvenient thing about a ghost is that they, they could just run around. <laughs> kind of funny though <laughs> it's a ghost on the loose Ooh, it's a ghost Over there. she appeared out of nowhere oh shit look at that wait where did she go wait did i just lose her i think i did oh, there she is She just appears and disappears. It's so funny. Is she trying to get outside? I think this is leading to the outside. 
Huh. 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 Well, I guess because the sun is out, she can walk around, right? Without, those, without the sun, she's just kind of like free to walk around. Hello. I opened the window while no one was looking. Look how pretty the outside is. Mm. If only I could have more than this. You probably think I'm being silly, huh? All this hopeless resisting. It's better to dream of what I could have than try to make it a reality, right? Please, help us get on the same page here, Quibi. We need to tell what we know. Can you do that? Sure. Although, after you hear all this, I think you might regret that decision. Wh why? The one in this family is nothing more than a tool. Something to be used and exploited. We're all expendable. Including me. As long as you're useful, you get to stick around. Lose your value. And you're handed over to the doctor. The doctor? Experimented on. Means check. Worse than death. I've seen it happen. Doctor. Again and again. And I've Turn off my cringe inhibitors. You're saying the knave did all that? It's just. That doesn't seem like something she would do. Uh, she's scary and all, but it seems like even she has lines she wouldn't cross. Hmm. I knew you wouldn't believe me. Well, I mean, I guess it's not really her. It's the doctor, right? Everyone thinks she's a good person. They all think of her like a real No, I don't think she's a good person at all. I just Mother. look past it. I don't, I don't really care. But she doesn't deserve that title. She's disgraced it and tarnished it. And if I had things my way... I never see her again. If only Perry were here. Wait, isn't this the girl from the cinema? Wait, she's not talking about Arlecchino, is she? There's that name again. Also, Paimon's getting a strange feeling. It almost feels like she's not really here with us. Paimon can't tell if she's actually talking to us or if she's mistaken us for someone else. Hmm. Hmm. Well, Wait, is this a girl from the cinematic? I don't want to look it up because like really needs I'm locked in at this point. We should keep her company for a little longer. Oh. She looks so young. But it seems like she's been through a lot. But that girl didn't die this young. She it's died. Windy. I should close the window. Ooh, look at the moon. Isn't it pretty? Hey, want to hear a secret? I heard that if you look up at the night sky in Shnashnaya, you can see the aurora. Wait, where is that? That that what is that? That castle where the house of the hearth was. Is that here? Or is that in Chesnaya? Perry and I promised each other that once we're older, we're gonna go see it together. But I can't find her. I'm worried she's also been. No, that wouldn't happen to her. She's special. Mother likes her a lot. I should really go talk to mother, but we just fought. She doesn't want to see me, and I'm too scared to face her. What should I do? Hmm. Actually, now this is all kind of coming together. Huh. <sighs> I really doesn't understand what's going on with her. Well, I think I'm starting to understand it. I could be wrong, though. Tomorrow. I guess we'll see. The night passes. All right. Looks like we're all here. Let's go ahead with the plan. Oh? What is it? Have the knave and the doctor always ever worked together? Ask that? Well, we kind of ran into Clairview last night. And oh, right. She might not work with the, the knave... The doctor back in Samaria. Not this knave, but the you previous knave might know the doctor. All sorts of bad things. It's possible that father and the doctor have had certain dealings, but I don't think father would work with him. Yeah, the doctor is a real son of a. He's a real fucking prick. Side, so there's not a lot of trust between them. The 
doesn't exactly set the stage for a successful partnership. I did hear, though, that when Father first became a harbinger, the doctor offered to work with the House of the Heart. She said Father no. Father rejected most of his proposals, except for one. God, she gets more attractive. It had to do with some sort of the more I learn about experiment. her. A secret experiment? Could that be what Clarvy was talking about? Hmm, I don't think so. I don't know any details about the experiment itself, but I do know it's an entirely independent operation. The doctor only proposed a direction for the research. That was the extent of his involvement. I still don't think that counts as working together. Mm. The details of the experiment are confidential, but mm. records are kept on all participants. That doesn't seem to be the case with the situation Clarevy referred to. I know you don't agree with some of the Fatui's methods, and I'm not asking you to. I wish the worst for them. I am asking you to trust us on this. The House of the Hearth has its own principles. There are certain lines we're not willing to cross. I guess if they don't if they don't mess with the duck tour and they get out of my way when I go kill them, sure. He seems to think the knave and the doctor work together to do something horrible. If that turned out to be true, Paimon doesn't know how he would even face you guys. It's just that it doesn't seem like Clarvy is lying either. She probably isn't. She's probably not talking about the same person. The easiest thing to do would be just ask the knave directly, but Paimon doesn't think she'd tell us. Father didn't come back last night. She's probably still near the shore. We'll be counting on you to distract her. Lynette, you're with me. Fremenet, she did not sleep last night? Wait, what? <laughs> be on your guard, everyone. Does... All right, does she just not let's sleep? Get to it. I just love watching her animations. I don't know why. Well, I know why. She has great animations, but yeah. Dude, I really need her weapon. The scythe thing is just so, so sick. Also, this... Uh, Shao's weapon is fucking dog shit. It gives, like, 22 crit rate. <laughs> My nuts give more crit rate than that. Holy shit. Also, I need to get her better, uh... I need to finish her... Um... Artifacts. But, uh... I don't have... I need to use my uh, primos. Not my primos, my thingy. My half moons. <laughs> She's just standing here, casually. She's just standing here, menacingly. Oh, it's you two again. I must say, you look a bit pale. Did you have trouble sleeping last night? Uh, I'm just, you know, just haven't been out in the sun. That's 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 what that is. Perhaps if you had less on your mind, you'd be able to absolve yourself of such troubles. So what are you planning yeah. to do now? Catch up on some sleep? Or should I give you some time to rack your brain for a topic to discuss before I ask any questions? Although I must profess to being curious. Without child here, how do you plan on distracting me? Pulling it out? I don't know. I'm, you know. Us? Distract you? <laughs> a g good one. But no. Um, we were just... I want a date. Hmm. Looks like you could have used some extra time to think. No matter. If you don't have any other plans, why don't you accompany me somewhere? Don't worry. I'll be sure to steer clear of any scheming children. <sighs> the ocean breeze is sure nice today. Children always think they can hide things from the grown-ups. But nothing gets past me. Least of all a little scheming. I think I'll let them have at it for a little longer. I can be very patient. Oh. Well, I'll leave you to think things over. If you're so inclined, meet me outside the Palais Mamonia. So we are having that date, or? Good things come to children who do as they're told. So I do hope you decide to tag along. If only for your friends' sakes. I don't even care about them. It's not, This is just me and you right now. What should we do? She clearly knows about everything we've been doing, and Paimon doesn't think it'd be a stretch to say she was threatening us just now. I don't, I don't give a fuck. Oh, good idea. Hopefully he sees it in time. Well, we should probably head to the Palais Marmonia. Paimon doesn't want to find out what happens if we don't show up. Based on what the knave was saying just now, it sure didn't seem like it'd be anything good. Okay, then we probably shouldn't keep her waiting. 
Nah, I don't really care. Uh, where's the Pele Mamornia? Whatever the hell that she said. <laughs> I don't even know what she said. The thing with the French word, I don't know. Seeing as we still have some time before my meeting, we might as well enjoy some pleasant conversation while we wait. I'm glad to see you get along with my children. Being surrounded by Can we have our own children? Necessary or? for a child's development. You're not planning on doing anything to them, are you? I assume you're referring to Lenny, Lynette, and Fremine. And basically. Although, there's that situation with Filial and Nentoy as well. Hmm. It appears quite a few people have been acting out lately. No matter. I'm not one to discriminate. All those who betray the house meet the same fate. There are no exceptions. Mm. Does that mean you're going to kill them? Oh. Are you here to beg for their lives? No, I, I don't even know why I'm here, to be honest. But the rules of the house change for no one. In my organization, everyone is responsible for their own actions. Mm, makes sense. But don't you care about them at all? They really respect you. They even call you father. You must feel something for them. Any organization in which feelings come before principles is one destined for ruin. The House of the Hearth is hardly an exception. You could say our principles are more stringent than most. I don't even know what that Perhaps means. I can offer you this consolation at least. As our guests, you two will not be held accountable along with them. Hey, that's good enough for me. I would imagine Linny, Lynette, and Fremenet will be able to keep their lives. As for Filial, Nantoy, and the others, I'm afraid there's little I can do. They can try to escape, but once you know our secrets, there's no getting out alive. Well... That's unlucky for them. But, but that's, that, that's awful. Talks. Oh, you seem concerned. Not really. Out of consideration for my guests, I suppose I could turn a blind eye for a little longer. If Linny and the others manage to dispose of Claire V in the meantime, but she knows her evidence huh? of their wrongdoing will be lost. In that case, I could hardly punish them for something I couldn't prove. If their efforts are unsuccessful, on the other hand, all will be held accountable. And the punishment will be severe. Of course. Oh, and Well, she you, seems fair, at least. I believe this belongs to you. Do try and keep better track of it next time. It takes a considerable amount of time to train a bird like this. It would be such a pity if you were to lose it. Permanently. Not even mine. Wait, where did you get that? Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have to chat. Now, for the matter at hand. Oh yeah, about our date. What are we doing? You to meet me here because I have business at the Palais Marmonia. Ugh. It has nothing to do with you, but I think it would be prudent for you to stick by my side for the time being. There will always be time later to run off and tell Linny what you've learned. Well, I was thinking more of a movie, but I guess this like works too. Wrapped things up just in time. Or you know, dinner. It'd be kind of cool too. Elemental reaction. Man, she knows so much already. <laughs> I'm not really surprised because she is a harbinger, but like, man, she she didn't let shit slide. She even fucking what's a side quest I'll do later. She even like captured the bird. That's kind of it's kind of wild. It's even weird, scarier because she was in front of us and she caught it from behind us. It's what's his face? It's been a Nouvellet. Monsieur Nouvellet. I must say, I wasn't expecting my meeting request to be approved quite so quickly. The Palais Mermonia operates with an efficiency worthy of admiration. It is only right that an esteemed diplomat such as yourself should be afforded the proper level of respect. Although, if I may speak plainly, I must confess that I did not anticipate we would have the occasion to meet again after presenting you with the Gnosis. I see you brought the Traveler and Paimon with you as well. If I may inquire as to the purpose of your visit. We're on a date. I'll be departing Fontaine. She calls it. There is, however, she calls me a prisoner, but I'd like, like to, to think of this as a date. Before I go. It requires a rather lengthy explanation, I'm afraid. 
So I took the liberty of explaining everything in this proposal. Please review it at your leisure, Monsieur Merillette. It's just quiet. Hmm. I understand your request. However, at the risk of causing offense, I must admit that I fail to see why you would wish for such a thing. I heard you have a certain fondness for water tasting, Monsieur Neuve. <laughs> so allow me to use water as an analogy. A family is like a large body of water with countless rivers flowing in and out. As someone who watches over this system, I would hope that each river that flows from the source will eventually reach the ocean. She of making course, a proposal for like body bags for <laughs> when she's about to execute or something. Most of the rivers will dry up along the way, disappearing into the ground and leaving nothing but a barren riverbed behind. Not all rivers are destined to reach the ocean, but I would not see their existence rendered meaningless. I believe the water that flows within them is simply meant for a different destination, like a field in need of irrigation. Or perhaps the glass of a certain water tasting enthusiast. I'm not following any of this, I'm gonna be completely honest. Did you get any of that, Traveler? Nope. Your words paint an optimistic picture indeed. Allow me to remind you, however, few among us are willing to sip from a glass filled with tainted water. Mm. It may have been tainted at one point in time, but not to worry. I'll make sure it's drained of all impurities and returned to its cleanest form. Hmm. What is I happening? I recall there being a transactional aspect to your proposal. Perhaps you could expound on that? If you accept my proposal, Monsieur Nevelet, I will gradually withdraw my forces from Fontaine. And... Unless absolutely necessary, I will no longer carry out any special missions within Fontaine. I presume I can take your words to mean that, in the future, cases similar to the Tartuffe assassination will cease to cross my desk? Tartuffe? Ah, that thief who embezzled funds from all those charities. Oh, from the... My deepest huh. condolences to his family, but without any evidence, I cannot imagine how the House of the Hearth might have been involved in his past. I think she killed them personally, course, right? From that, commer from that uh, Nevelet, trailer? I'm sure certain measures could be taken to reduce the frequency of such troubles. You choose your words carefully, indeed. In that case, I'm inclined to accept your proposal. What is the proposal? Well, thanks for your generosity, Monsieur Nevelet. Well, with that settled, we should be going now. I took the liberty of bringing along two bottles of spring water from Snezhnaya for you to enjoy. <laughs> I get the chance to hear your impressions. Perhaps at our next meeting? Yes? Indeed. I trust you would not overlook your commitment in the meantime. I wonder what the proposal right, is. Traveler Paimon, time to go. Why are we always meeting with other people when it's our date? Man. She's definitely not... Mm. God, she doesn't understand how this dating thing works, bro. Next she's gonna call me a prisoner. Whatever. I'm having a good time. heard you mention some rivers, a large body of water, and then some kind of irrigation scheme. And then him drinking water, that's all I got. You really want to know? I would imagine there might be more pressing concerns at the moment. Not really. Uh, Lenny, I don't really hope everything's going okay. Ah, he's fine. What could happen to him? The knave is right here. Oh, Paimon recognizes that look. You've got your tiki cap on, don't you, traveler? Nope. I'm staring at her ass. Hmm. Uh. 
Ow. Oh shoot. Are you all right? Wow, he must be really strong because he oh, fell and we Jesus. didn't. I'm so sorry. I was so focused on selling these papers, I wasn't looking where I was going. Well, let me make it up to you at least. Here, take this paper. On the house. Hmm. The large oh, you scar. Don't have to give us anything? Please, I want to. It's not like I'm short on supply. All the extra. He's the guy from the House of the Hearth, isn't he? Anyway. It's my fault, really. I was just trying to bring home some extra mora for the family, but I bit off more than I can chew. I haven't had many takers today, so I'm still swimming in papers. What's going on here? Uh, nothing much. Uh, I just ran into your friend here on accident. I should probably get going, actually, so... Hold on. Uh-oh. Um, of course, I'm happy to compensate you with Mora. It's just... I don't have any on me at the moment. I'll take three papers. Here. Your payment. Oh, thank you for your patronage. May the Archons bless you with good fortune. If only I had the chance to run into such generous customers every day. <laughs> I should probably just take on a smaller inventory, though, right? I'm getting married soon, so sometimes it's hard to not get ahead of myself. Anyway, I should head out. Goodbye. Is he, like, secretly begging for his life? What's happening? Well. Now that my affairs are settled, we should take the boat back to Poisson. We've even acquired some light reading to enjoy along the way. Actually, why don't we uh, stick around for a little longer? Uh, Paimon just realized how hungry she is. She can't head back to Poisson on an empty stomach. It appears you two are under the impression that delaying our return will somehow alter the situation in your favor. I'm sorry to ruin your fantasy, but your efforts are meaningless. Mm. That being said, I could be persuaded to give Linny some extra time. I just have one condition. Yes, I'm paying. To my request, I'll even answer some of your questions. You're quite curious about Claire V, are you not? And my relationship to her? No, not really. Wait, why are you being so generous all of a sudden? You're not gonna ask us to do something bad, are you? <laughs> We're gonna take someone out. You overestimate yourself. You don't have the talent for bad things. Uh, then what can you possibly? The most important consideration. Wait, what did she say about us? Yeah, whatever. Is that both sides receive something they want? Demands and threats only get you so far. Wonderful. Here it is. God, she has nice <laughs> lips. When the time comes, make the choice that you deem most appropriate in the situation, and lend your help to the House of the Hearth. Okay. Sounds normal enough. But what do you mean, when the time comes? When is that supposed to be? That is for you to decide. Well, <sighs> God damn it. Then we have a deal. Follow me. Sure, whatever you say. Thanks for being, <laughs> thanks for no help. I guess I'm not really surprised. Oh, okay, this should be the end of it. Into the sunlight. To the nameless ruins. Oh, great. <laughs> Fuck, man. Nah, she made us go somewhere completely in the middle of... I hate it when there's a spot you have to go to that's like in between teleports. That's really obnoxious. Oh, wait, I can do this. I don't know how much faster this is, but I might as well try it. Maybe this isn't that fast at all. Wait, this is probably kind of slow. Well, I mean... No, it's definitely faster than running. Oh, it's definitely faster than running. Okay, this is not that bad. <gasps> it's here. I think it's here, right? I believe it's here. Cool. What is this place? 
Is this the old house of the hearth? Long forgotten by everyone. It used to be a grand building. Now it's nothing more than a pile of rubble. A lot of this story is being anymore. Nor does anyone care about I feel like a lot of this story is being told if you didn't watch this place the trailers. Something to do with the story I'm about to tell you. It was before I became a harbinger. And before Linny and the others joined the House of the Hearth. Mm. Due to certain events, I first killed Clarvy and then her mother. And this is where it all happened. Right, because it's, she, this is where the old House of the Hearth was. Patience now. Allow me to explain Clarvy's side of the story first. I'll start from the beginning. Yeah, this is all coming together now. Claire V was six years old when she was brought by her mother, Crucibina, to live in the house of the And that's the old, uh... From the outside, it seemed like a fairy tale. A thriving family made up of kind adults and friendly children. Crucibina is she the old knave? the knave at that time. Yeah. And the house of the hearth was under her control. She was Claire V's mother by blood, but she was also the mother to all the children in the house. Claire V was happy here. For a time. But she quickly realized that being part of this family wasn't a fairy tale at all. It was a kind of purgatory. Purgatory? Hmm. Exactly. The House of the Hearth takes in war orphans from all over to that. But as for how to raise them, that depends entirely on the person in charge. And I'm assuming the old knave was Crispy not good at that. Up with a novel idea. She would teach the children to fight, force them to duel each other, and then crown as the king of the house the child who proved themselves most worthy of inheriting her title. Mm. It's difficult to estimate the number of children who died or were maimed in the process. Oh, jeez. There's little I can say about the ones who died. The ones that emerged with permanent injuries, on the other hand, well... They still served a purpose. Were they the ones sold they to the doctor? Over to the doctor yeah. To be experimented on. Jeez. Or sent away on dangerous missions. Nothing more than tools to be used and then discarded. So those were the experiments Clarvy was talking about. But what actually happened to her? You said that Clarvy was Crucibina's daughter, so if Clarvy tried to convince her to stop what she was doing, Crucibina probably would have listened. Right? That's assuming that she has a heart. She does not. Despite being she is an evil bitch. Mother, Crucibina cared little for her daughter. She forced Claire V to join the House of the Hearth only as a means to demonstrate her own impartiality as a mother. To prove that she treated all her children equally. That's not good. Claire V did try to convince her mother to change her ways, but it was to no avail. After her efforts failed, the only other option was to rise up and try to fight back. Unfortunately, the other children had already been thoroughly indoctrinated into the illusion of happiness Crucibina had created. Jeez. Of course, there was one exception. Someone Clairvy's age who knew the truth about the House of the Hearth. Her name was Peruware. Wait, the friend that Clairvy mentioned? Peruware? Friend, well, I suppose we can call her that for now. Claire v was a cheerful and passionate person with a tenacious spirit. Peruware, on the other hand, was rather cold-blooded. Her cold-blooded nature allowed her to see through Crucibina's facade. Yet, it was also this cold-bloodedness that prevented her from acting against it. At least at first. While Claire v longed for freedom, Peruware was convinced that, amid all the fighting and violence, she would make it until the end. Despite their differences, the two became fast friends, united by their knowledge of the truth. Claire v told Peruware that she hoped to create a real family, where no one would be killed or sacrificed. There may have been a certain naivete to her ideas, but Claire v proved her determination many times over. She tried countless times to run away, ask for help, or expose the truth. But her efforts only earned her beating after beating. Jeez. The only thing that kept her going was her strength of will. Even with her body racked with pain, she would still stand on her tiptoes and open the window at night. She and Peruware would look out at the moon together, 
a fierce longing for freedom shining in her eyes. But one day, that light simply vanished. Oh no. What happened? Her hopelessness resulted from a culmination of things. Ten years had passed. Ten years worth of failure after failure. She and Peruere weren't children anymore, but finding any chance to escape still seemed as hopeless as ever. It was during this time that Peruere suggested a new plan. If escaping was out mm. of the question, why not take down the very person sitting on top of this throne of lies? Mother herself. Claire V rejected that proposal. She claimed that as a famous harbinger, Crucibina possessed an unimaginable amount of power. Trying to kill her would have an incredibly low chance of success. Harbingers are a lot easier to, are a lot easier to kill than you think. Reason, but Peruere <laughs> could see it written all over her face. Don't give him too much credit. Claire V still thought of Crucibina as her mother. Killing her own flesh and blood was a line she couldn't bring herself to cross. If she couldn't escape and fight back, then only one option remained. Precisely. Death. Death was the only way that she felt she could be free. It happened during a duel. When she arrived at the dueling ring that day, her partner turned out to be none other than Peruere. The very person that had stood by her side. It was a polar user. It was a fierce battle. But ultimately. Claire V decided to let Peru wear end her life. From that moment on, Peru Ware's journey was one written in flames. When the rain finally came and washed it all away, there she stood, the sole victor in Mother's endless game of slaughter. A trail of corpses strewn across her path to success. It was the very result she had predicted ten years prior. Even then, she oh, believed she would make it until this is a really bright scene she after all that dark, uh, the, fact that she the dark background. As mother's undisputed heir, rather, her success left her with an inexplicable sense of restlessness. She was unsettled, and there was only one thing that could quell that sensation. Perhaps you two would like to take a guess as to what it was. Crucibine, you mean? But, but. Correct. This is the place where Peruere killed her best friend. A mere year later, this is also the place where she fought tooth and nail to kill the mother they shared. The moment she it was acted, a pretty cool battle too. Any conception of what was right or wrong ceased to matter. It's one of the principles of the house. Only those who survive get to write the rules. Peruere won the battle. And became a harbinger herself. After which her majesty, the Tsaritsa, bestowed upon her a new name. Arlecchino. So the Perry Clairvy was talking about... It was you all along. Your Perry where? Arlecchino is just a name you got later. I left that name behind long ago. I must say, hearing it now does bring back memories. Mm. After I defeated Crucibina, the moniker of Mother died with her. I chose to forego the title she called herself and even chose to give up my own name. I rebuilt the House of the Hearth under a new identity. Not only as Arlecchino, but as father. Mm. That actually makes a lot of sense. Is where the story ends. Any more questions? Yeah. Based on what you just told us, Clairvy wasn't a little kid when she was killed. So the Clairvy we met... Was she really a spirit at all? I suppose you could call her an illusion born of flame. Her existence is like ashes to a fire. Something left over in the wake of blaze and ruin. Mm. You see, a certain power runs through my veins. It's not unlike a curse. My flames leave behind shadows of anything they consume. That's kind of cool. Course, the chances of those shadows morphing into a sentient entity are exceedingly slim. 
Clearvy is a very special case. Clairvy died when she was 16 years old, but what emerged from the flames was her six-year-old self. Hmm. Her appearance wasn't the only thing affected. Most of her memories were lost to the blaze as well. Memory is a mysterious thing indeed. Losing a portion of your memories will alter your sense of self. Lose ten years worth, however. And it would be like living in the past. Like returning to a version of yourself that... never grew up. No wonder Paimon got such a weird feeling when we were talking to her. Oh, that actually makes Perhaps a lot of sense. I should put it this way. Claire V is someone trapped in time. It may seem like she exists with us in the present, but she truly lives in the confines of her own past. Is there any way to like send her so back? If all of that is true, then you must have known about Clairvy for a long time. Indeed. She's a rather volatile and unstable entity. Sometimes she would look after the children. She's even saved some of their lives. But other times she would hide from me and become obsessed with revealing the truth about the house to anyone who will listen. So she is revealing Shadows the truth, just not the, the truth of the current about. times. Any new information they encounter is quickly forgotten over time. Your attempts to expose Claire V to sunlight, they failed, yes? The reason is actually quite simple. In Claire V's mind, the, the house, house is, is impossible, impossible to, escape. to escape. Yeah. And it is this very perception that traps her there. Hmm. But no matter. All I have to do is kill her again and all will be resolved. I don't anticipate so much as a single speck of ash will be left behind this time. Wait! Paimon can understand why you might want her gone, but isn't there another way? Isn't this more freeing her than anything? Oh, she's trapped in her six-year-old self. She's still your friend. At least talk to her first. That seems more cruel than not killing it's too her. Late for that. She broke the rules, and now she must be punished. That goes for Filial and Nantoy as well. All right, probably not them, Just but quite the effect on them. I hope you understand the difference between Crucibina and myself lies in our formulation of the rules, not our policy for enforcing them. Upholding the rules without question is a trait we both share, because that is how a household should be run. Well, you know. Is this really what you want to do? Finally, some voice Whatever lines. could you mean? Don't you want to say a proper goodbye at least? Whether as a killer or as a father, there are two things that must be avoided at all costs. Anger and sorrow. Anger makes you impulsive. Sorrow causes you to waver. Well, it appears it's about time to proceed. Before we arrived, I told some of my well-behaved children to bring our troublemakers here by... Me? Now. I'm, I'm well-behaved. I do believe I've kept my end of the deal. I give your friends quite a bit more time. As for what happens now, we'll just have to wait and see. I think it's a little bug. Here they are, father. Oh, are you gonna execute them? Seeing something like that would actually be a first for me. That kid is not well. I'm sorry. I heard about how you helped buy us more time. We didn't. She knew. I still failed. I couldn't find a way to fulfill her wish. Huh? Are you... Perry? Indeed. It's been a while, Clarify. Perry! Shh. Stay right there. I'm sorry to postpone our reunion, but first, I believe certain scores need settling. Oh. Father, let me explain. Out of my way. Well, she already knows, Father. so. You chose to conceal a threat to the house. And for that, you must be punished. Oh, she's Overall, pissed. However, I suppose your wrongdoing is hardly the most egregious of the bunch. So I'll deal with your punishments later. As for right now, 
The more pressing concerns are the traitors among us. Among us? Among us has been mentioned. Do you mean us? Father, what Amogus. We didn't mean to. Fultz, why don't you share what you heard? Yes, Father. I wouldn't trust that kid. Expert midnight meeting number three. Participants, Filial, Nantoy, Sato, Toddy. Nantoy clearly said, if only Father wasn't the one who took us in. Sato added, I'm sick of this life. I just want to live as a normal person. Filial was the worst of them all. She called us crazies and said a bunch of mean things about Father. Well, that kid is crazy. What the fuck? I did not. You're, you're lying. Fultz is trying to frame us. It's not like I'm the only one who heard those things. After that, you and Toddy and a bunch of other people started talking about Clairvy. You were using all those things Clairvy brought up as an excuse to question Father. We're birds locked in a cage. The only way out is to destroy it. That's what you said, wasn't it? You little... I'm sure they did say that, gone, but you? like... What did I ever do to you, huh? That kid is still, like, not well. Have you forgotten who stood by your sickbed, watched over you, and changed your dressings? Come on. She wipe his ass, too, or... What's your reason for all this? Uh, that kid gives me the creeps, bro. We don't want you to die. You're our family. I don't believe you. I feel like this kid wants to watch someone die. You wouldn't be doing this if that were the case. So why? Why have you backed us into a corner? We all live in the house of the hearth. You know the type of work we do, Filial. A single betrayal can cost dozens of us our lives. It's not like it's never happened before. That kind of thing is hard to forget. Why would you know that, you little bastard? That's why the house of the hearth cannot tolerate any form of betrayal. Ever since we came to Poisson, you've had seven secret meetings. A lot of the things you talked about really crossed the line. You've been spying on us for half a month? Wait a second. Now that I think about it, the move to Poisson was just a way to make it easier to spy on us, wasn't it? Because we were all in one place. You've had this planned all along. Filial, Nantoy, I'm sorry. I owe you both my life. I owe Claire well, I mean, that's not going to be worth much in the second one. He takes her life. After I got poisoned, I wouldn't be standing here today. If this were any other situation, I would do anything to repay that kindness, even if it cost me my life. But <sighs> rules are rules. I'm sorry. My hands are tied. Some family. Enough, filial. We made a mistake. And we should own up to it. We broke the rules. Plain and simple. And now we have to face the consequences. I'm sorry, Chaplot. Fultz. I'm sorry, Father. We... accept our punishment. Chaplot. According to the rules of the House of the Hearth, how should these traitors be punished? All those who betray the House pay with their lives. And so it shall be. I kind of liked her short hair better. It's not an appropriate time for that, but I was just thinking about that. Please wait. Something you want to say, Limmy. Please reconsider, Father. What Filial and the others did. Does it really count as betrayal? We all come from broken families. I assume so, yeah. From the very first day we joined the House of the Hearth, we wanted nothing more than to make it a real home. But the truth is, none of us know what a real home should look like. I'm not saying I have all the answers. All I know is this. Killing Filial and the others may uphold the rules, but doing so will only bring us further away from being a real family than we've ever been. 
So please, father. Please, reconsider. I agree with Winnie. Father, please. Linny, you... Well, they are the favorites, so she'll probably listen to them, right? I also agree with Linny. The Knave. An order once given cannot be rescinded. Uh-oh. However, given the extent of your determination, I suppose we shall have to go about this a different way. Draw your weapons and face me. Man, that's gonna suck for you guys. Our weapons? Yeah, go ahead, fight. Father, are you referring to a duel? Precisely. The rules of the house will not be altered. Traitors must be punished. All right, y'all have a good time. We're gonna Resolving we're gonna go. Disputes with a duel is also one of our rules, one that also applies to me. Demonstrate a sufficient showing of strength, and I shall offer a concession. Wait, beat father in a duel? Impossible. Man, that's gonna suck for you guys. Father is way too strong, even for Linny. It's all in the cards. Did you hear that, Traveler? Oh, they're fine. They'll work it out. The others have to duel the knave. What should we do? Can they really Shh. do something like that? It's gonna be fun. If they lose, I don't wanna watch this. The house are really gonna be executed. Hey, are you listening? Shut up. Don't you want to say a proper goodbye at least? Hmm. Anger makes you impulsive. Sorrow causes you to waver. Hmm. Oh. Looking at that expression on her face, she seems really serious about this. Guess that means there's no chance she's throwing the duel on purpose, huh? No, she's probably going all out. All out. When guests are around, families are often on their best behavior. And any disputes are less likely to escalate. When the time comes, make the choice that you deem most appropriate in the situation. And lend your help to the House of the Heart. Traveler, hey, where are you going? Traveler, uh, I'd like to see myself what the fourth harbinger can You're do. Asking to join the duel against the name? That should be fine. I'll allow it. We do have a ready made dueling ring at our disposal, after all. All I would advise is this keep a firm grasp on your weapon and give it your all. Any less, and you may just lose your life. Wait, I don't have the proper team for this. Shit. Uh oh. Surely my underleveled na uh, underleveled, underleveled daughter Latina should be fine, right? My name Echo and Song. I don't have the damage. I love that domain expansion. It's so sick. Been your turn this whole time. Well, I guess I've been winning. Among Us! Oh, this is probably not good because I'm healing now. Declaring a bond of land under the table of What? Solidify. 
Ow. <laughs> Among us. Am I fighting or are you fighting? I don't understand. Don't tell me what to do. Is it my turn now? You say so. Gather. Where is she? Chit, chit, chit. Among us. Not bad. Heal me. There we go. She heals so much. Holy shit. I never realized how much Arlecchino actually heals herself. Ooh. I'm gonna need that. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I almost lost the jungle. Holy shit. That's kind of cool. She can jump on that. Shit. Shit. It's probably safe to assume she's pretty pissed. Oh, mommy. Cinder of two worlds. Y'all can call her, you, you guys can call her father if you want. I'm calling her mommy. Shit! Ow. Nice cheap shot, you fucking bitch. Is it? It doesn't seem like our chance. Is it someone else's chance that I'm not knowing? Wow, she killed her. I'm kind of dead, buddy. We're not exactly in a... Whoop. Jump ice is here. Can I not heal my... Can't heal. Wait, when did I win? What? Did I win the fight? When did that happen? Oh, it must have been uh, Farina the whole time. I need that weapon. You should know better than to crowd in one place. He pulled his attack anyways. Sorry for what? This pitiful excuse for an attack. God, she's so hot, bro. Tyrant! Drive! Her domain domain expansion crimson moon still 
Not strong enough to beat me. Well, you're kind of cheating, but whatever. Dude, that was a great animation. Holy shit. She just kills them all. I believe we can end things here. It's not often that we get to enjoy the company of guests, after all. We wouldn't want things to get too out of hand. <coughs> Brother, are you all right? Lenny. Given that I am the victor of this duel, as agreed, the punishment stands. No! I never thought things would end like this. However, everyone involved in the duel demonstrated a remarkable level of strength and determination. In light of this, I'm prepared to change the method of execution. Elwar, the bottled flames I gave you for safekeeping. Do you still have them? Y yes I wasn't sure what they were for. But I kept them super safe. I didn't lose a single one. Wonderful. Then, in just a moment, I'll have you administer them. Bottled flames? Jeez. Indeed. They're the product of a secret experiment. Under certain special circumstances, flames can be extracted from my person and preserved. What else can I extract I from you? Never mind. Searing pain will spread across every inch of your body. No harm will come to you physically, but your memories will be burned away. If you can withstand the pain. When you awake, you'll have forgotten everything you know about the House of the Hearth. And will be expelled from the organization. In other words, administering this concoction will kill the version of you that grew up in the house. And give you a new identity. Memory hmm. is a mysterious thing indeed. Losing a portion of your memories will alter your sense of self. So he wasn't acting. I thought he was like giving us like papers for like undercover so stuff. You're just letting us go, father? Why is it always in quotations? You misunderstand. Memories are extremely important. Once consumed by flame, the version of you standing before me will die. And our secrets will die with you. So no, I don't intend to just let you go. Because the person who survives will be nothing but a stranger. Even so... Even so... I won't have to live in fear anymore. I'm sorry, Father. I'm sorry I let you down. But I... I really... <laughs> Don't cry, Filial. You haven't left the house yet, so there are still rules to be followed, yes? Remember what I taught you. Anger makes you impulsive, sorrow causes you to waver. Don't let yourself be controlled by your emotions. Of course. I'll remember. Dry your tears, and go pursue the life you really want. Yes, yes Father. Father. Chaplot, Foltz, Elwar, take them back to Poisson, and bring Lenny and the others as well. I prepared three extra vials of bottled flames. As for whether to take them, the choice is yours. Goodbye, children. The next time we meet, I will no longer be your father. Thank you for all you've done for the house. I hope you have bright futures ahead of you. Hmm. Are they actually leaving? Father. Let's go. Put his hand to his chest. He has something to say. Here, grab my arm, Linny. I'll help you walk back. Thank you. Oh. 
Claire be? Can we talk now? I've been waiting for a super long time. <laughs> you really are Perry, aren't you? I haven't seen you in so long. How come you're all grown up? Wait, did I somehow travel to the future on accident? <laughs> yeah, that's what it, that's it. Dreaming? <laughs> you're in the future. A long dream. Neither. You died, Clarvy. That's what happened. You could at least sugarcoated it a little. Look, she's that speechless. But, oh, okay then. Well, I guess she's been a lot more accepting than I thought. That's it. You accepted it just like that? Yep. If that's what Perry says happened, then I believe her. Perry wouldn't lie to me. I guess you're not wrong, no. I really need to know why I'm like this. I'm more curious about what happens in the future. If you're a harbinger now, Perry, that means Mother is gone, isn't she? Can you tell me about it? I want to know what happened to her. And to me. You never stopped trying to defy fate. At first, no one believed you. You could only vent your frustrations to the moon. In fact, you often sought comfort in the night sky. You wanted to see the Aurora, so one night we promised each other we would go to Snezhnaya to see it together. Later on, you tried to run away, but you were brought back each time. Mother spared your life, but it wasn't out of kindness. Instead, she decided to make an example of you by slowly torturing you over time. Jeez. That way, the other children would know what happens to traitors. Still, you never gave up. Mother hoped that through ruthless duel after ruthless duel, she would be able to crown an ultimate victor among the children she raised. But you called on everyone to unite, to fight to a draw in order to reduce casualties. Your efforts may have only delayed the inevitable, but still. You gave them hope. You tried everything you could think of, but every attempt ended in failure. Still... You never turned your sword on Crucibina, and you never turned it on me. On that gloomy day, you told me... <laughs> I wonder if she would have beaten her. 16 years of my life, I've done everything I can to fight for freedom. But now, I realize that the only freedom I truly possess is the freedom to choose to die. I never imagined I would say something like that. I must have been feeling really worn down. But somehow... I still think I understand. According to Mother's plan, only one of us was going to make it until the end. And I always hoped that person would be you. If I could do it all over again, I still don't think I would make a different choice. Even when I first met you, I knew you'd be able to do what I couldn't. Is that so? Even now, I'm not sure I truly understand what kind of freedom you were trying to pursue. But as the head of the house... They're not dying kind, I'm assuming. children's father, I've tried to give them the most basic of freedoms. The freedom to choose their own fate. It's something I discussed with the Udex of Fontaine. The children who want to leave the house will have their memories wiped clean of all secrets pertaining to the organization. In return... They will be allowed to live a normal life in Fontaine without being prosecuted for their past. Of course, I won't simply hand freedom to them on a silver platter. They have to fight for it and prove themselves worthy of it. Only freedom that is earned has true value. That's more than enough. That's exactly the kind of life I was fighting for. You know, Perry, I think you're a pretty amazing king. And a really great father, too. I'm really happy that you're the one who took over the house. I guess I do have one regret, though. I still haven't seen the outside world. Well, it just so happens that our dear guests over here have been to many nations and traveled to countless places. 
Perhaps they would be willing to tell you what the outside world is like. Really? Of course! <laughs> We've traveled all over the place! We've got so many stories, we could probably talk your ears off for three days straight! Probably longer than that. Uh... You know, I used to dream of being a bard. Playing the loop while singing into the winds of freedom. Yeah, he got kicked in the nuts. It's kind of wild. <laughs> Even if there was no one there to listen, I would have continued to sing no matter what. Ah, that's where Mora comes from. <laughs> I never knew that before. If I had some Mora, I would buy three new dresses. One for me, one for Perry. And one for mother. I can't see her wearing a dress. I don't know why. Too bad Perry doesn't like wearing dresses. Yeah. And mother? Well, she probably wouldn't accept something like that either. Hey, I guess I just have to keep them all for me then. I could wear a different one every day. This one. Oh, this one just advances it forward. The situation was super dangerous. Linny and Lynette were accused of committing a crime, and they were going to have to stand trial at the Opera Epiclès. Oh no. That must have been hard for all of you. What happened next? A lot. Don't worry. We were able to turn the situation around super quickly. Ah, uh, thanks to Detective Paimon, of course. <laughs> How'd you do that? Come on, tell me. Ahem. Okay. So it was... It's gonna take a while. This really is gonna take three days. Holy shit, please stop. Shadows don't have the capacity to learn or grow. Any new information they encounter is quickly forgotten over time. Hmm. Clarvy, you've worked tirelessly from the shadows to overthrow the House of the Hearth. Now, by my authority as the Knave, I shall announce how this matter ends. You are hereby expelled from the House of the Hearth. You are no longer tied to this place, nor are you bound by its rules. <sighs> You're saying that I can finally leave? I get to experience the outside world as well? Uh, oh. oh, I almost forgot. There's no getting older for me. Still, seeing who you grew up to be makes me really happy, Harrowware. Take care of yourself. Goodbye. May we meet again someday. I also have certain sentiments left unsaid. I wanted to tell her that the aurora I saw in Snezhnaya was just as beautiful as the ones in the pictures. But a shadow's memories reset at dawn. Had we delayed any longer, we wouldn't have had the time to say goodbye. Whatever regrets may linger, let them be lost to the coming of a new day. Father? <coughs> hey, he's still walking. It's Linny! Hey, Linny! What is he doing back here? Let's go check it out. That's a pretty sad ending. Father, it's like a bittersweet the one. Flames have been administered. The filial and the others have left the house. And you, what have you decided? 
thank you for giving us that choice, Father. But we never wanted to leave the house. It's the only home we've ever known. Lynette and Fremenet feel the same way. They're recuperating back at the Hotel Bouffe d'Ete. But I decided to come back and tell you where we stood. I'm sure you're well aware of the expectations I have for you. I want you to follow in my footsteps and become the next king of the house. Yet you seem to have different ideas. I must admit, I'm rather surprised by your decision to stay. There's nothing wrong with choosing to live a quiet life. Leading this organization is a heavy responsibility. One not so easily carried by someone forced onto the throne. I just... never understood what you saw in me. What made you believe I was deserving of that throne. He is a gentle boy. Talented. And, most importantly, you cherish your family. You would do anything to protect them. Even if it costs you your life. <laughs> Speaking up back there was so brave of you, Linny. It's all thanks to you that we were able to convince Father to back down. You're a hero, Linny. Hero? Father is the real hero. Had Father gone all out during the duel, there's no way I would have walked away with my life. She must have had it all planned from the beginning, from the very moment she suggested a duel. I'm not deserving of that title. I'm not strong enough, or smart enough. You're wrong. In my opinion, all you need to be deserving of the throne is conviction, and the necessary strength to act on it. Hmm. We may have different ideas of what it means to be a family, but you can hardly be said to lack conviction. What you truly lack is strength. For someone of your talent, though, that's something that will come with time. Even without that strength, you still chose to face me in a duel, even though the odds face were Face me! Face you. me! Face me! That capacity to honor your convictions is what Foot I dive. truly Foot see. dive! Father... No one knows what the future holds, what tragedy or triumph may be in store. Being at the head of this organization requires the strength of will to face whatever comes. Caution will only hold you back. If reaching a certain standard were required to go after what you want, I would never have succeeded in killing my predecessor. Back then, there was still a considerable gap between our abilities. Strength may decide the ultimate victor, but those who let a lack of strength dictate their decisions or undermine their convictions will never be worthy of the throne. I understand, Father. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Let's chuck them on Children spit there. That's kind of weird. Grow up to surpass their parents. Only then can a family continue to flourish. The road ahead is not an easy one, so I'll ask you one last time. Are you certain you want to stay? You've done so much for me, Father, and that kindness must be repaid. Plus, with Project Stuja at hand, there are many. They don't know what that is. Ahead, and I, for one don't intend to back down protecting my family at all costs that's my conviction then you're welcome to stay as for project stuja you need not be too concerned if those cowardly businessmen and heartless dignitaries try to take us down i'm prepared to teach them a lesson having members who longed for the light was our organization's last weakness with those members no longer among our ranks the House of the Hearth is like a spider hiding in the shadows. We need only wait for our prey to come to us. Mm. At present, our imperative is to use their plan to our advantage. In doing so, a crimson moon shall rise amid the frigid blizzards of winter. No demonstration of loyalty shall go unrewarded, and no sacrifice shall be in vain. As for the two of you, whether we meet again as friend or foe, I'll remember the camaraderie we shared in this moment. 
So can we have that date now? Or? No matter how arduous the journey ahead. Oh, she's still going. I hope we both reach our desired destination. Wait, two days later. Fuck! What could happen now? That's wrong. And they really, they really like to make, um, they really like to drag out these quests. Holy shit. <laughs> it should be done. I don't understand what could be left. Oh, there we go. We're meeting here or where? Didn't even listen to what she said. Lynette, how are you feeling? Much are you guys better. dead yet? Whew, what a relief. That's the answer, no. Still seem alive. What about you? Are you feeling all right? I'm right as rain. He'd come out unscathed. Us, on the other hand, well, we've been bedridden for two days. I couldn't even turn over. Oh, and you guys are weak. I wanted to ask, is Claire V gone? Yeah. Linny and the other members have left Poisson and returned to the House of the Hearth. According to him, there haven't been any more sightings of a spirit roaming the house. I see. I'm glad. Father came to check up on us two days ago and told us about what happened with Crusabina and Claire V. Actually, I... I've met Crusabina before. Ow. Are you even born? Wait, what? You've met the former name? Sabina died a year after Claire V. It was during the year between their deaths that I joined the House of the Hearth. How old is he? Crusabina had an extremely cruel and radical way of doing things. While she was alive, the atmosphere in the house was suffocating. When I joined, though, the experiment she valued so much had already okay. come to an end. And all the people involved, dead and injured alike, were gone. Crucibina never talked about the past with us newcomers. A couple of months after I joined, Father killed Crucibina and burned all her files. With that, the names of all the people subjected to her experiments, Claire V included, were lost to the flames, along with the painful memories. They represented. Father took in Lenny and me a couple months after that, but she never mentioned anything about Crusabina or Clarvy. Hmm. It really seems like something she was planning to keep to herself. The last time you talked to her, did she mention why she kept it a secret for so long? She said she didn't want us to be affected by the darkness of the past. She was worried we'd develop a false sense of gratitude towards her if we knew about it. The foundation of a family should be free of any corrupting influence. Whatever happened in the past, it has nothing to do with who we are now. And that's what Father told us in the end. But I still thanked her for everything. It was only after hearing about what Crucibina did that I finally realized how insignificant our lives could have been. Yeah, it could have been really bad. The house meant nothing to her. To say that she valued them in any way, even just as a tool, would have probably be giving her too much credit. <laughs> Jeez. If father hadn't taken over the house of the hearth, I probably would have already. Father rarely brings up the fact that she saved us. She doesn't believe that being indebted to her should be what ties us together, but... Even if we didn't owe her anything, we would still choose to stay. Because this is our home. We may have arguments or times when we feel wronged. 
Some people may even choose to leave. But as long as father is here, we will always have a home. Whether the path before us is bathed in sunlight or shrouded in shadow, we'll follow father wherever she chooses to go. So I wanted to say thank you for helping us make it through this crisis. Ain't no problem, man. Without your help, we could have lost a lot more along the way. Oh, we didn't do anything, really. Of course, you're welcome anytime. Are Ain't no problem, man. And Nantoy okay? I actually saw them at a cafe this morning. They didn't recognize me. From what I could tell, they were drinking coffee and talking about one of the operas that started running recently. They seemed happy. If I had to take a guess, I would say they finally found the kind of life <laughs> they always wished for. That's nice. When the hearth flame goes out. Completed. Uh, well, that does it. Um... I think since this is kind of running long, about two hours, like two and a half hours, I will make a separate video condensed whether about what I think about this uh, quest and a whole bunch of other things pertaining to how Genshin is right now. I'll leave that for another day, but for now, I hope you guys liked it. The playthrough was, I hope you guys liked the playthrough. I like the boss fight and I'll talk about everything else in a different video, but... Until then, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will catch you gamers in the next one. Bye.